The Pianch River delineates much of the Afghanistan-Tajikistan border. The largely unguarded frontier provides a safe haven for all manner of drug smugglers and militants who travel easily between the two countries. I hope to assess the dangers this poses for Tajikistan. This is a border crossing near the village of Nizhny Pianch. Customs agent Anwar Hojaev tells me the facility has just been erected with American aid at a cost of about 28 million euros. Those entering from Afghanistan are subjected to multiple searches. The border guards are obviously trying to impress me with their efficiency. But the Afghan travelers seem camera shy. Some say they're visiting relatives. Others tell me they're here to drum up some business. They won't say what kind. The official checkpoint has led to a modest boom in cross-border trade. Dozens of trucks pass through every day. The guards have access to the most modern equipment and search the vehicles thoroughly for weapons and illegal drugs. It's estimated that 20% of Afghanistan's opium trade flows through Tajikistan. <laughs> Hajayev tells me that most suspect items show up on the monitor. If suspicious goods are discovered, the screen image can be enlarged. Usually the truck will be searched. I'm skeptical that such procedures are really comprehensive enough to be effective. These drivers tell me that corruption is a major problem in Tajikistan. They say they're hauling Afghan potatoes. This trucker claims that border guards always demand bribes, sometimes large, sometimes small. He says anyone who refuses to pay isn't allowed entry. But the border police insist they do things by the book. I leave the outpost for the nearby village. The residents are friendly enough, but tend to keep to themselves. They claim to know little of what's going on in neighboring Afghanistan, but they say they are not afraid of the Taliban and other militant groups. This man tells me he fears God alone. The Taliban are only people just like us. If you don't bother them, they leave you alone. But if you interfere with them, they'll cause you trouble. He says his fellow villagers are good, hard-working people. I travel further north. Tajikistan is known for its towering mountain ranges, and much of the 1,400-kilometer frontier region is virtually impassable. Still, I'm told that smugglers and other criminal gangs use the hostile terrain for their illicit trade. Radical Islamists have their hideouts here. The Tajik capital, Dushanbe. This is where the government directs its two-pronged struggle against drug smugglers and Islamist militants. I meet with Rustam Nazarov, the director of Tajikistan's Drug Enforcement Agency. He outlines some of the problems his task force faces. He says it's increasingly the case that smugglers are accompanied by heavily armed guards there to ensure that the drug deals go through. Nazarov adds that his agents regularly trade gunfire with the drug gangs. He says Tajikistan confiscated four and a half tons of illegal drugs in 2009. I'm allowed to document contraband from the latest busts. Cannabis, opium and heroin, destined for Europe through Tajikistan. Drug enforcement officials collect the illicit substances here before they're incinerated. But the drug trade is an enticing prospect in a country where half the population is unemployed and smuggling brings with it the promise of good pay. My next stop is a bazaar in downtown Dushanbe. I want to get a feel for how people live. The market is filled with nuts, exotic fruits and vegetables. Most Tajiks earn just enough to make ends meet. And still, the traders here are eager to extend small gifts to a German journalist.
This woman sells traditional Tajik breads. As we talk, she tells me that life is tough. But actually, she says, there's little reason to complain. She earns the equivalent of 7 to 10 euros per day at the market. There's not much left over, but it's enough to feed a family. Most Tajiks earn far less than she does. And daily life is little more than a struggle for survival. I discover a mosque just a few streets away from the bazaar. The faithful are being called to midday prayers. Tajikistan is a traditional Muslim country, and religion is taking on ever more importance. Religious leaders are exerting themselves on the political level as well. The Islamic Renaissance Party is the second most powerful political entity in Tajikistan. Its members are highly critical of what they call an authoritarian government. They say the country's abundant resources are controlled by a small group of oligarchs. I interview the leader of the Islamist party following prayers. Muhyiddin Kabiri is also a political science professor and describes himself as a moderate. He's gravely concerned about the future of his country. He believes things will become more difficult for all political parties in Tajikistan. He says there's a danger that the Tajik people will be swayed by radical rhetoric, that they'll go underground because they increasingly see democracy in Tajikistan as a farce. Political analyst Rustam Haidarov voices the same concern. As we meet for tea in the evening, he complains of the lack of democratic principles. He fears the oligarchs and rampant corruption could prove Tajikistan's downfall. He speaks of the danger that religious groups will use mass dissatisfaction to foment radicalism. These groups will obviously receive aid and support from the Taliban based in neighboring Afghanistan, so a destabilized Afghanistan poses a danger for all of Central Asia. Gunfire and explosions outside the capital. In this case, it's counter-terrorism training. There are constant reports of skirmishes between Tajik security forces and extremists. Militants from Afghanistan increasingly use Tajikistan as a safe haven. I want to get a realistic assessment of the immediate danger posed by radical Islamists. Military commanders boast that the situation is under control. This officer tells me the current exercise simulates an operation against armed terrorists from Afghanistan, but it's also training for dealing with domestic terrorists that are operating in Tajik territory under direction of terrorist organizations in Afghanistan. As my sojourn comes to an end, I return once more to the mountainous border region. From here, the country seems so idyllic, peaceful and stable. But this trip has shown me how fragile the stability is and what the future might hold if peace does not come to Afghanistan.